So yeah, uh, you guys are here at Haas Automation today, and uh, I'm just going to give you a little presentation about what we're about and uh, kind of give you an idea of what we do and inspire you a little bit. We're not here to sell you anything or sell you on any idea of, you know, um, basically what we're trying to do is just get you thinking, you know, and, and give you a little taste of what manufacturing is about. Um, honestly, I, uh, I happen to be, I just came back from school one, one afternoon and uh, saw this show called Monster Garage. Um, and I was just like, whoa, okay, this is cool. So I, you know, I kind of started paying attention to what was going on on the show and uh, I realized, you know, the cool things you could make with your hands and uh, with the right tools also. Uh, I mean, it's limitless, you know? So uh, anyway, long story short, I, uh, from that day forward, I was really, really interested in manufacturing and I started taking a liking to uh, working with my dad and welding and things like that. And uh, eventually, I kind of caught up and I was just like, well, this is fun, this is good, this is great, but uh, what else is there out there? And um, I remember this machine shop we used to go to. Uh, it, was this, it was a pretty large machine shop, but they didn't have that many guys there and uh, basically, we would always go in and we would have these parts made. And I thought, man, you know, if I could learn how to make these parts, we could save ourselves a lot of money, you know, and make some money at, at the same time. And uh, so I, I got a job there and I started working for these people and um, they taught me a lot of great things. And uh, then I saw these CNC machines in there. I was running a manual machine. I, I ran uh, a saw for a long time. I ran a broom sometimes. <laughs> I did whatever I could. Eventually I, I worked my way up onto you know, running a mill and a lathe. I'll explain what those are later. Um, and uh, then I saw the CNC machines and then I realized, you know what, if I'm gonna take this any further, I gotta get some education. So anyway, I went to school. Um, I only went through a two year program. It was a, it was a technical program at a community college. And um, that kind of just shot me right into uh, CNC manufacturing and, and eventually uh, I ended up here as a as an apprentice, and um, I've been here for almost two years now. And Haas has been really good to me, and uh, they've taught me a lot. And I mean, I've just completely went leaps and bounds from where I started. So uh, that's a little bit about me, a little bit about Haas. Okay, we're the largest CNC machine tool builder in the Western world. Um, I mean, we're, I mean that's, that's a lot to, to say. At one time, J Japan was pretty much one of the few, I mean, that was pretty much it. You'd either get a Japanese machine, a German machine. There wasn't too many, there was hardly any American-made CNC machines. Um, this is what we make here. Uh, this is just a taste of what we make, really. Um, this right here, it's a VF1. This is a mill. It's kind of what I was talking about a little bit ago. Um, this right here does, uh, you know, it's like a drill press basically, but you can also cut directionally like this, you know, right, left, um, and back and forth. Um, you cut slots and all kinds of stuff. This is a lathe. You actually put the part in the machine and you turn it down. Um, but we've gotten really advanced with that kind of stuff, and uh, you can do a lot more with a lathe now, and you can also do a lot more with a mill. Um, This was a raw piece of stock. It was cut on a saw, basically, so you'd buy that chunk of steel, and it's gonna be a completed part when it's all done. That's actually cutting threads, like what you'd turn a fastener, same thing. Now that's doing something similar to a milling machine, and then it's indexing and it just keeps cutting, cutting slot after slot to create splines. This completed part here would be like a yoke, um, something that might connect to like a transmission or whatever. Okay, there's a lot of h techs in the U.S. Um, You'll see the next slide, like 1172. 
what that means for you guys is just about, I wouldn't say all the community colleges around, but there's a lot of colleges um, that have an HTEC program in it, which means that you can go and apply and get into this program and uh, you can learn how to program our machines, become a machinist, and so forth. And uh, you don't have to become a machinist here. I mean, you guys could do anything. You could be an engineer. Uh, you can work with computers. You can, I mean, there's just, it's endless, you know? We're bombarded all the time in the press. These guys may or may not know about it, but one of the big storylines on the American press is the death of American manufacturing shipping jobs overseas. And then we listen to you guys talk about Haas's plans to not only stay here, but continue to maybe expand into the, into the property just uh, to the south of us. So I guess I just wanted you to elaborate on the fact that it isn't over. And for a company like Haas, who's making an investment here locally, why do they choose to stay? Is it the talent base here? I mean, they could go to Korea. They could go to China. They could take all of this, pack up, and go overseas, but they don't. So can you comment on maybe not just Haas's commitment, but just what you guys see as the future of manufacturing? We're seeing that's not true. If, if that was true and manufacturing was dead in the United States, we wouldn't have as good a sales as we have. Um, we can't build as much as we want because we can't find enough people to come work for us. Right. And what we're finding from the people who we sell machines to and from our suppliers is that they want to build more too. The, the, the need is there, but they just can't hire enough people to do it. Um, there's a new trend called reshoring that's happening right now, and, and instead of outsourcing, it's reshoring. It's bringing these jobs back. Uh, I just announced that uh, I think it was GE, uh, General Motors, and some other companies are actually bringing jobs back from overseas, from China, from India, back to the United States. And it's because there's this advantage of having the production and the engineering and the design all under one roof, all in one area. Um, it would be hard for us and it, what other companies are finding that it's very difficult to have the design team here in California or the United States designing things and then uh, having it built an ocean away in China. Uh, what happens if there's a problem? What happens if the designers or the manufacturing engineers uh, want to go downstairs and see how their design is working and, and tinker on it and improve on it. It's very difficult having multiple locations for design, for engineering, um, and for production. So Haas is an example of that advantage of having everything in one location, under one roof, and a lot of American companies are finding that too, and that's why they're bringing jobs back to America. <laughs>
plug it in, and then as soon as we unplug it, the code is is set, set in yeah. there until we plug it back in and change the code. So and when so, it powers up, it goes through its no, sequence. Yep, yep. We should make sure we turn it I did. off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. Talk a little bit about uh, why did you guys get involved in, in the robot club here at Rio Mesa? Well, actually, what, we, what happened was we started off, um, it was me, Roman, and another one who's at a tennis meeting right now, and we just... We got really into engineering because we went through an uh, engineering program off at the base around where we live. Right. And so we just decided we wanted to do something that kind of at school and bring other people around. And uh, when we started telling our teachers about it, uh, our teacher, Mr. Seidel, uh, told us about the robotics club. And you know, none of us had ever actually done that before. So we're like, oh, that seems kind of cool. And we could integrate that. And that way we could get more people to come for the engineering and robotics club. And right. kind of from it, it actually just morphed into the robotics club, essentially. And that's how we got into it and we just loved it. So I, my brother uh, is a mechanical engineer and you know I was kind of wanted to know a little bit more about like what my brother did so I I decided to join this club and then we got into the robotics um, so I thought that was pretty cool and because we're all really interested in uh, the computer sciences right. so like programming and we we three took the computer programming class that we have here at school last year and we thought that was really cool. So when RJ and Roman said that they were gonna do this whole robotics club thing where we're gonna build robots, and we're gonna enter them in competitions and program them to do different things, we were really excited. Uh, my plans are to go to a four-year university and uh, study electrical engineering. Outstanding, and? Uh, I wanna do the same thing, but I wanna study, study computer science. Perfect. Oh, I'm going to a four-year university to study zoology or animal biology. Beautiful. So uh, just like Drew, I plan on going to a four-year university and studying something in computer science. I plan on going to a four-year university studying computer science as well. I am too, but I'd also do computer engineering. Fantastic. And I plan on studying electrical engineering. Very good. And your experience here at Rio Mesa, I am an old Spartan myself, class of 83. You guys are all going off to college. That's fantastic. You feel like you got a good education here? Yes. 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 This yes. place prepared you for the future? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, that's good to hear. Thank you, guys. When I was in high school, I was your typical high school geek. I liked to experiment in my garage with stuff, and um, I made a wrong turn in my life somehow. Instead of pursuing electrical engineering or something like that, I became a lawyer. But when I got back and decided to become a teacher, um, I'm now a physics teacher, and when I came here and interviewed for the job, uh, the principal, Ray Gonzalez, said, would you like to take over our robotics program? And I said, well, sure, that sounds interesting. <laughs> so I took it over, and um, it's got a lot of promise, a lot of potential. And uh, we're working now on putting together a sort of academy or institute here that will uh, have a strong emphasis on computer programming, video game design, robotics, things like that and hope we can get kids more interested in STEM areas, science, technology, engineering, and math. And I think robotics and computer programming would be the way to do it. So um, you know, a lot of the robots we build, we build from kits, but some of the students are more ambitious and they build a, a robot from scratch. Right. So we financed it, but Andrew built this from scratch. This is a quadcopter. A lot of people now are using these in security for drones, police, federal government, military. It's got onboard guidance system, um, gyroscopes, GPS, um, quite a piece of work. All from scratch. All from this scratch. This was not a kit. So no. he engineered the design and... No, he looked at a kit and got ideas from it. But basically we ordered all these parts one at a time and he put it together that way. And he used an Arduino processor, a very powerful one, uh, to program it. So he's pretty good with that and he is now at the University California, Santa Cruz, wow. and they have a program just for robotics, and he's in it. There we go. And uh, he also worked on this. This is a uh, hexapod robot. He's got um, six legs, and I need to power it up and get it running. I haven't done that. But there's three servos on each leg, so each leg can move in three different directions. You got six legs, so there's a lot of programming to get this thing to work. But you can make these things do amazing stuff. And you can build on top of them to give them sensors, uh, infrared, ultrasonic, uh, motion detectors, things like that.